Since her adolescence, Masih Alenijad has been a thorn in the side of the Ayatollahs who rule Iran. When she was 19, she was arrested for anti-government activity by the morality police, held in prison without charge and eventually told by a judge that he had enough evidence to have her executed. He decided to let her go. In recent years, she's complained, challenged, protested and boycotted all those who support the compulsory wearing of the hijab. Masih now lives in exile but has remained just as vocal possibly more so from the outside, gaining a huge following online. From the age of seven, Masih Alinejad wore the hijab even within her family home, according to the wishes of her traditional family. But she says she always felt the discomfort. She started to remove it in private when her father was not around. Five years ago, she posted a photo of herself without hijab whilst driving in Lebanon. She described the simple freedom of feeling the wind in her hair for the first time, which later became the name of her book. This photo sparked a social media liberation movement, inspiring women throughout Iran to remove their hijabs publicly and post it online. The online movement, My Stealthy Freedom, has gained millions of followers worldwide. White Wednesdays invite women to protest the compulsory hijab law. But the move was not without its complications. She insists she's not against the hijab, but rather in favour of choice, not law, for Iranian women. And Masa Alinejad joins us now from New York. It's nice to have you on the show, Masa. You said that the hijab felt wrong from a very early age. I'm wondering what that sense was, where it came from. Um, first of all, I have to say that um, from the age of seven, millions of girls in Iran, they have to wear a um, headscarf when they start a school. And if you don't wear it, then you won't be able to get an education. For me, uh, it was a personal experience to wear hijab even inside the house because I grew up in a traditional family. But hijab became a political issue in Iran as well. It's like after the revolution, the Islamic Republic of Iran got our bodies like a hostage and we had to carry the most visible symbol of Islamic Republic on our bodies. And if you say no to compulsory hijab, then you won't be able to go to university, you won't be able to get a job, you won't be able to, to live in your own country. Mm. So for me, first, I just started to take, I mean, I always say that I started my own revolution from my own kitchen. And then I started to take off my black uh, long chador inside Iran. And I was taking off my hijab every uh, time when the police were not around, when my father was not around in Iran. Why do but you think... when I first time... Sorry, just to ask, why do you think it is such an important rule in Iran? I, I heard it said that, you know, when the regime is at its more relaxed, then women start to show their fringe, and when it's at its most rigid, then the hijab comes further down onto the forehead. Why do you think this has become such a symbol of authority? Um, I strongly believe that three pillars, main pillars, actually is really important for Islamic Republic of Iran to keep them. One is death to America, the other one is death to Israel, and uh, third is um, hijab. But nowadays, for Islamic Republic of Iran, the women inside Iran are the biggest threat because this is the, the, actually the tool that they can control the whole society, not only women. Um, compulsory hijab is just a wall, the first step. And, and beyond that, there are more discriminatory laws. When you are unveiled, then you cannot have a mixed party with you, men. You can get lashes. You can get arrested. You cannot, you know, um, get, as I told you, get a job because you are unveiled. So for the government of Iran, this is even more than, you know, it's a biggest threat than the American is right as well. Because if you are unveiled, then you have to be um, in prison. You have to, you know, be kicked out from I, the I, country. You have been outspoken. You've been vocal. You've posted photos. And you've started your own revolution, the White Wednesdays, as we heard. What creates a tipping point now? Uh, because you're not against the hijab, you're just against the law enforcement of it. What would create a tipping point that would give enough Iranian women whatever is that bravery uh, to over overturn it? 
Uh, you know, as I told you, um, uh, this is actually the government trying to make, uh, you know, men against uh, women, using men to oppress women. So nowadays, through these campaign and social media, women found their agency, found themselves powerful. So they're actually um, doing a punishable crime in public to say no to compulsory job, and men are joining them. And uh, as I told you, uh, in my campaign, women got arrested just because of uh, protesting against uh, uh, compulsory hijab laws and 29 women got arrested by the Islamic Republic of Iran and after that when they got released on bail those brave women went inside the court and took off, take off their, they took off their headscarf and they said that we are not going to keep silent even when you're uh, you, threatening me. You don't, so, think, you don't think you're fighting against something that women actually choose to do uh, as a powerful and important part of their own Iranian culture? Let me, let me make it clear for you. My mom wears hijab. My sister wears hijab. In fact, all the female in my family, they wear hijab. So when I, I so many uh, you know, times when I go to media, I get often this question that, are you against Islam? Are you against hijab? But I have to say that this is Islamic laws which is against me and millions of Iranian women inside Iran. Sharia laws, actually. You know, I, as a woman, uh, according to Islamic law, I am not uh, allowed to sing solo. I'm not allowed to show my hair. I'm not allowed to dance. I'm not allowed to be a judge. I'm not allowed to get a custody of my child. I'm not allowed to get permission in, without getting permission from my father or my husband to travel abroad. So this is so clear that we are not against those women who choose to wear hijab, but all the Islamic laws are against me and millions of Iranian women and some people in the West might say that you know by talking about compulsory job you're causing Islamophobia but yeah. these are the discriminatory laws causing Islamophobia that is why my, my, I mean, for, uh, our goal in our campaign is now to invite all Masa. the Western feminists, especially female politicians, to, uh, you know, challenge compulsory job laws when they go inside Iran. Masa, great to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed, Masa Elijah.